Okay, so hi, what I want to do today is, uh, since I'm not going to be in school, I wanted to still make a video for you guys, uh, and we're going to get a little off topic away from fingerprints. Um, by the way, your fingerprints exam is going to be on Friday. Yeah, let's do it on Friday. Uh, so I'll be back on Wednesday. But so what I want to do today um, is do some serial number restoration. So what I've got is an old part of a shotgun um, that has a serial number on it. And most of these serial numbers are going to be, especially the older ones like this, um, sometimes they can be used in a crime um, or sold on the black market or whatever. Uh, but somebody's going to try to scratch off and remove the serial number, which doesn't actually remove the serial number because we can still use techniques uh, by using a couple of different things. Um, we can use a really highly uh, acidic solution known as Fry's reagent as well as a nitric, ac uh, nitric acid reagent that is going to react with the metal in order to, even after the serial number has been scratched off, to still try to bring it out. Uh, so I'm going to try to do this here in my garage. Uh, and let's see, what else are we doing here? That's about it. Uh, so for step one, that's what I was going to say. Step one, what I'm going to do, I'm going to lock it here into my vise, and then I'm going to try to completely remove uh, the entire uh, serial number. And then I'll kind of talk about the process of what this restoration is doing and why this stuff works. Okay, so that is pretty well removed. Um, let me see if I can get a little more zoomed in to show. What we're gonna have to do now is we're gonna have to take that metal and I'll pretty much wanna try to repolish this metal. Um, when we're putting a serial number into, uh, in, into a piece of metal, essentially what we're doing is we're taking another piece of metal in the shape of those letters and we are jamming it into the metal. Well, what's happening is that once that metal die is hitting here and creating that number, it, it's making an indentation, but that metal that was there has to go somewhere. So it's changing the surrounding density of all of the other metal. But what we need to do is we need to use our uh, chemicals to try to kind of figure out where those uh, density changes are happening. So I'm gonna try to get this smoothed up and get this cleaned up uh, because we want this to be about as best of a mirror finish as we can possibly get. So I'm gonna switch over to uh, trying to sand this into getting it to be more of a mirror finish. Okay, I think that that's gonna be pretty good. Um, another thing that I need to do whenever I'm doing this here is I need to somehow mask off this area. And the way that I'm gonna do that is uh, by using hot glue. Uh, now I don't have a hot glue gun, so I'm gonna try to have to figure out a way that I can make this work. Uh, but essentially I'm gonna make a hot glue little bubble bath for this kind of stuff. So I'm gonna get hot glue and I'm gonna try to make a little perimeter around here. And then I'm gonna try to build up on some walls um, going all the way up. So that way I'm kind of making like a little pool in this area that I can pour that acid and apply that acid and kind of let it soak for a little bit. Uh, so let me figure out a way that I can do my little hot glue bubble bath. like this. What if we do it like this? Is this going to work or is this a terrible idea? Do 
There's only one way to find out. probably wouldn't call that perfect laboratory procedure, but I think it worked out all right. So let me prep the materials that we're gonna, that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna get some, um, some protective equipment and get some of the safety stuff set up. And so first up, what I'm gonna use is gonna be Fry's reagent. Um, and I'm going to pour it into uh, this little kind of bath here. And I'm, I'm gonna be using some, um, some Q-tips to help me get it in there. Uh, and I've got some absorbent safety cloth underneath it. I'm wearing goggles, I'm wearing, or glasses. I'm wearing um, gloves for acid protection, and I'm also wearing a mask for ventilation protection. Definitely don't want any of this stuff to get anywhere near my eyes. Definitely don't want it on my hands. Gotta be super duper careful with it. So you see how green this is when it's coming out? What I'm looking for is I'm looking for that color to change from a green to a real nasty kind of yellow. And that's telling me that it is corroding. Those top layers, whew, that stuff stinks. And once it, I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. And once I see that go from that green to that real yellow, I'm going to switch it out and I'm going to change it to a different solution. So often like a common question is how many times do I actually have to do this? How many times do I have to rub this in? Um, and it's never really an easy answer because you could be doing it uh, three or four times and you could be able to completely restore a serial number. Um, and it could take as many as 15 times. So next up I've got nitric acid. And so I'm just going to alternate these two fluids between uh, the nitric acid and the Fry's reagent. It would be really, really nice if I did this three times and I got a full restoration. Back to fries.
really cool. I don't know if y'all can see this, but I can already kind of start to see a change. So I'm going to do another round of fries before I switch back to the nitric acid. So what this mixture right here is, this fries reagent, is uh, copper sulfide, uh, which is an acidic, with hydrochloric acid. And those two together are what's going to give it its green color. Uh, that copper sulfide is going to be like a really blue color. Now we're really starting to see some pretty good definition. Uh, again, what this is doing is it's bringing out those changes in density between the metal that got hit with the dye, which is the little uh, metal stamps that gave this uh, its serial number. Because when that dye gets hit into the metal, it's pushing that metal that was there into all the surrounding areas and what we're left with is a little crater, a little dent and those are left in little terms that we can read. We call those letters and numbers. So I'm not going to bore all of us with the entire process of uh, going through everything right here. It's a lot easier for me to see um, here in front of me uh, than it is when I'm, I'm looking at the screen right there. And it is pretty difficult to see on the screen. Uh, but those numbers are getting pretty legible again. And I probably did, what, how many did I do? Seven or something, seven or eight uh, different layers of fries reagent with a couple of nitric acids. And you can see that what was totally shaved off is kind of being restored now. Um, and if we, if we were to keep going and keep doing this, if we were to keep doing more fries reagent on there, uh, we could probably, actually, you know what, let me just do one more. I'll just do one more swab and see what we can bring out just to finish off the day. Pretty good, huh? So y'all can see that this, this really didn't take me a whole lot of time. I mean, start uh, to finish from just uh, going out and grabbing the camera and getting all of this stuff um, started to the completion to right now is less than 45 minutes. So this process really doesn't take a, a very long time. And if we're gonna be doing stuff like this in a lab where I know that I've got all day uh, and I know that I've got proper equipment like a glue gun or something, uh, we can shave some time off of that and make it sure that uh, our serial numbers that we're restoring are gonna be much more legible. And uh, on top of that too, I know it's kind of difficult to see because I got kind of bad lighting in here. Um, but those numbers are pretty visible uh, here to the naked eye in front of me. Uh, but another thing that we can do is use photography and then develop that photography uh, by using an app like Lightroom to really bring out that contrast change between uh, those numbers and those letters that were shaved off uh, during the filing process and the restored process for using the fries reagent and the nitric acid. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you enjoyed this. No, I cannot bring the guns into the classroom, but I'm working on getting uh, a die set and I'm working on being able to be able to do this kind of stuff uh, in the classroom later on. Thanks for watching. Be good to the sub.